Facebook side. Hey everybody, Dr. Stallman here again. Welcome to our next episode of The Doctors Is In Live with TOA. Uh, I'm your host, Gray Stallman. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am an orthopedic spine surgeon here with TOA. I've been working with TOA for 25 years, um, and I've been proud to be able to help a lot of people. However, remember that this episode, I am not your orthopedic surgeon. Uh, we need to consider this information for education and uh, uh, informational purposes only. Um, uh, if you have a problem, uh, don't consider this medical advice. If you have a problem, get a hold of us and one of our experts can help you with your musculoskeletal issues. I hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. I'm sorry I was gone for a couple of weeks. Um, it was a good time for me. Um, I will tell you, just so you know, since we're live, I am on call today. So if my phone goes off and it's an emergency, I may have to cut things short, but I'm going to plan on marching forward. So, you know, I hope that uh, you found these episodes that we've done so far interesting. Um, we would certainly appreciate your input with regard to other topics, um, questions, things like that. Please feel free if you want to, if you're live to um, submit a question. We'll try to get to it today. Um, we've talked about a lot of different spine topics. I think into the coming year, we're gonna start branching out and talking about some other topics as well. So stay tuned for that. We just wanted to get things rolling with something that I know most about, which is the spine. So up to this point, we've talked a lot about problems and treatments for the problems. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about more uh, anatomy and theory, um, and we're going to talk about chronic low back pain and my views on why people find themselves into this situation. Um, I'm going to tell you, the subject is a little bit controversial, and what I mean by that is there are differing opinions by different practitioners about why people have chronic lower back pain, what is normal, what's not, what's natural, etc. So this is my opinion based on lots of years of training, lots of years of experience, reading the literature, and how I treat patients day to day. So at least be open to uh, my concepts. Uh, you may not agree with all of them. Your, your other doctors or chiropractors may not necessarily agree with them, uh, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of opinion out there, but it's hard to really cone down on absolute fact when it comes to biology in the human body. So let's see what we can do about uh, talking about chronic low back pain. And what I really want to concentrate on is why chronic low back pain bothers people, why it bothers some people more than others, um, and a little bit about anatomy. Um, and we're not going to really talk so much about treatment because that's a whole big can of worms that uh, uh, we can get into in another time. So first off, we're going to talk a little bit about the lower back anatomy. I think it's important because it really plays a role in what creates the situation where back pain occurs. Um, why do people have it and why is it so common? And I kind of have developed a, a system of five reasons why people develop lower back pain is try to explain things in a more simple way um, to see, uh, to explain to patients, uh, you know, what I think is going on. Okay, so let's start a little bit about anatomy. So you got my models here. These are spine models. There, uh, this one is the entire spine from the neck down to the, uh, to the lower back. This one's just of the lower back. Um, this one shows a little bit more detail. Um, the spine is a really complicated structure. There's lots of moving parts. The purpose of the spine is basically to provide us the ability to stand upright. It supports our body against gravity. It's the attachment points of all the muscles and everything that helps us to move. It also um, protects and uh, creates a space for the nerves. So the, in this model, for example, 
The basic structure is bone, which are the vertebrae bones in the front. These are blocks here are the vertebrae. Um, in between the discs, the, the bones, sorry, are the discs. They're kind of like rubbery shock absorbers, okay? In the back of the spine are joints. Everywhere there's a disc, there's two joints. And that combination of disc and two joints between two bones allows things to bend, move, and twist, okay? Um, lastly, the, the stack of bones and discs essentially creates a tube up and down your spine, which is where the nerves run. It starts with the spinal cord up at the brain, going down through the neck and the upper back, and then branches out into various nerves that come out to service the various parts of the body. And remember from our, one of our previous videos, nerves do several things. They allow us to feel, they run our muscles, make things move, they allow us to sense things around us, uh, they tell the brain what's going on with the body, and they feel pain, okay? So um, that's where the nerves come from, and you can see these yellow guys here are the nerves on this model, and basically, I don't know if you can see this, but right here, here's a bone, here's a disc, here's a bone, and you kind of see this hole where the nerve comes out. It's created by that stack of the bone disc bone in the front and the joints here in the back. And you can see that if, it may be a little hard to see, but if you move around, the space for the nerves opens and closes because it's essentially built out of three pieces moving together, okay? So that's the anatomy of the spine, the basic anatomy. Now, muscles attached to the bones here, they help us with posture, they help us move. Um, there are straps of tissue that run up and down the spine in the front that are not on these bone models that are called ligaments that hold us all together. There are little teeny coverings over each joint. Uh, it, think of it kind of like a little cap or a boot over the joint. And what they are called is the joint capsule. They are soft tissues. Uh, they kind of keep the joint together. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of nerves that attach to all these pieces that are those sensor, those sensor nerves, the things that help the brain understand what's happening. So just like in your car, you've got an oxygen sensor and a CO2 sensor, tire pressure sensor that tells your, your car's brain how things are going. When the check engine light comes on, that's because a sensor has gone off. Well, these nerves that attach to all these parts talk to the brain, and the brain interprets that and tries to decide what's happening. All of these structures, nerves, discs, bones, muscles, ligaments, um, are part of why and how we develop pain in the lower back, okay? So probably the two most common areas that we see in the anatomy that, that leads to back pain problems are the things that move. So it's the discs and the joints, okay? Um, now, when we start life, we're horizontal. We crawl around, right? Okay, it's like an animal. We crawl on all fours. When we start to learn to walk as a kid and stand upright, our spine goes from horizontal to vertical. And what happens with that is gravity affects us this way. So actually, when we get vertical, our spine starts squishing together. It starts compressing. And um, it's as early as we start walking that we have discovered that the earliest signs or findings of degeneration, of breaking down of these moving parts is starting to show up. And in fact, they've done studies where they've taken cells out of the disc and looked at it under the microscope. And they've seen early degenerative changes, wearing down changes, as soon as a crawler becomes a toddler. What does that tell us? Well, first off, it tells us that the aging degenerative process is not just time, it's wearing down. That process starts really early. Why is that important? Well, um, because degeneration of the moving parts is typically the most common reason why we have back pain. If the discs start wearing down, the joints start wearing down, we develop arthritis or changes in the joints and degeneration of the discs, we start to get pain in some cases. Now, it's interesting that some people have very little back pain throughout their lives, 
There's some people who have lots of back pain throughout their lives. What's the difference? We're not all equal, okay? Everybody's an individual and everybody is um, kind of going their own path in life. Their body breaks down in different ways. So we can't expect everyone to have the same sensations and changes in their body as we go through life. It's just not realistic, okay? So, um, the anatomy again of the spine, the discs, the bones, the nerves, the joints, muscles, the three-dimensional movement has a big role. You can see these joints here, they're pretty small. They're about the size of my fingernail. Um, as compared to like a knee joint, which is about the size of my fist, like that, um, or a hip joint, which is about the size of a cue ball, um, these joints are really little. Well, if you put a lot of stress through a really little part, it can wear out faster. And so that's why we have more common problems with earlier back pain related to degeneration or wearing out of those joints because they're small. They, they don't have a lot of extra uh, reserve in order to um, resist stresses and strains and whatnot. So um, again, the anatomy is the key here in that we're working against gravity, things wear out, and, and, and parts change, which can then lead to um, symptoms. Okay. Also, as we age, so aging is a big one. You keep hearing me say this. I don't mean you're old, just time, wearing down. Um, our bodies change. Um, the soft tissues, the ligaments, the joint capsules, they become less flexible and elastic. The muscles become less strong. And all of these parts hold things together. So as those parts wear down or break down, it can affect the mechanics of the spine as we move forward. This is another reason why people, as we go through life, 30, 40, 50, 60, sorry, but middle age really, can, I consider it starting in the mid 20s on up, um, those time changes uh, accumulate. And um, that's where we start seeing more and more and more problems with back pain because the parts are now starting to show a little wear. Um, and so that's where the, the population that we see that has back pain more chronically, not just I threw my back out when I lifted a, uh, a brick or something like that, but more chronic back pain, it has a lot to do with how the body parts are breaking down, okay? So um, we can't tell anybody that they're gonna or not going to have back pain problems. We can't predict that. We do know that back pain is normal in most cases because it's simply related to the wearing out of the moving parts and other factors. And we're going to talk about those in a second. There are very few uh, problems like cancer or infection or um, broken bones that are related to back pain that are not normal. Uh, but the vast majority of people with chronic back pain problems, it's actually a normal phenomenon. It's the wearing down or changes in the lower back, okay? So that's where it gets really challenging because we can't expect everybody to follow the same path. We can't expect our bodies to be as good as they were a long time ago. I mean, let's face it, you've never seen an older person with, with the same hair, the, the same skin, uh, the same uh, uh, length of their earlobes uh, as they were when they were a younger person. Our bodies change as time goes on, and all of those factors are involved in back pain, okay? So now, we're gonna kind of talk a little bit about my simplification of, of an explanation. When I see somebody in the office, um, they ask me all the time, why am I here? Why is this the way it is? And I've kind of figured out over the years that there's basically five factors involved with how our back changes, okay? So the number one factor is genetics. And what I mean by that is our bodies are essentially programmed by our DNA. Our mother and father come together and create a new individual. Um, and our bodies are programmed genetically. So some people's bodies wear out earlier than others. Some people's bodies wear out in different ways than others. We, that's why we can't tell how um, 
Joe six pack is going to wear out versus Mary Malone. We just can't. We can't compare the two, okay? We can see people, and we often see people in my office who have chronic back pain problems who, when they think about it, say, well, yeah, my mom, my dad, my sister have all had back problems, back surgery, that type of thing. And it gets us to thinking that, yeah, there actually is a genetic component to it. So genetics is number one. Now, that's not modifiable. I can't change my genetics, okay? Time, aging, and wearing out are number two. Again, these are the five factors of kind of why people find themselves in how much or how little back discomfort they're having. So as our parts change with time, they break down. No body part regenerates itself, okay? You never see somebody's body part better now than it was in the past, okay? So just like people get arthritis, people get saggy skin, people get wrinkles, um, same thing happens into the spine, although it's affecting a lot of different parts. So we see degeneration of the disc. We see arthritis and degeneration of the joints. We see tightening, thickening of the ligaments. We see loss of flexibility. We see changes in the alignment and the space for the nerves um, as all these parts settle. So time and degeneration, the aging process, um, has a role in why people develop pain problems, particularly in the lower back. And again, it's variable. Not everybody's body ages or changes in the same way. There's an infinite number of factors, such as what do I do for a living? How heavy am I? What do I, what do, I do good or bad for my body? All these things have a contribution. So there's never, ever, ever a single reason why somebody finds themselves with chronic lower back pain. Number three, um, so number three is kind of what I call the bad luck category, okay? That's the what I've done to myself. Trauma, uh, injury, illness, um, repetitive sports, repetitive activities, whatever. All these things that cause moving parts to wear out kind of get glommed together into a category of, well, it, it's happened to my body. Now, people oftentimes get a little wound up about, well, if I just not played football in high school, I wouldn't be where I am. Or had I not picked up that box when I was 16, I wouldn't be where I am. Not really realistic. And in fact, I try to tell people or try to help people understand, you have to live your life. It's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just a factor involved in how we change as time goes on. So I try to help people try not to get too um, anxious about that factor. Because it's, again, it's in the past. We can't change it. There's not one specific thing that was done that now leads to this problem. It's an accumulation of a lot of things. So that's the third, what I call non-modifiable, factor, okay? So it's genetics, age and time when wearing out, and then the um, unknown bad luck factors, okay? There are two modifiable things in our lives that can have some role in leading people to having back pain problems and changes that we can actually change, okay? The first and the most important in the United States is a sedentary lifestyle. We've become heavy, Lazy, sitting people where our bodies were designed to be active, moving, and, and upright people, okay? Uh, why is that? It's a modern society thing, okay? As we have developed techniques and technologies for, to help us, uh, we've gotten out of the jungles, we've moved into the office, we've gotten away from a uh, well-balanced diet to garbage. We've gotten away from moving and exercise to sitting around playing video games. I'm sorry for you video gamers. But the problem here is, is as our generations have gotten more and more sedentary and more and more heavy, our body parts get weaker and weaker. The, the ligaments and, and muscles get uh, less elastic they get less strong, and um, we can't support our core like we were designed to. 
Uh, if you're carrying around a 100-pound bag of dog food every day, all day long, your arms are going to get really tired. People ask me all the time, well, if I just lose the weight, will my back pain go away? Losing the weight may help. It's not going to cure you of where you are as far as the degeneration changes, but it certainly can help make you feel better. So in the ideal world, we're mobile, we're fit, we're lean, we eat well, we don't eat garbage, we don't sit all the time. Studies have actually been done where they measure how much pressure is in each of these discs in various positions. So they'll put a, needle, a pressure sensor needle inside the disc and have people stand and sit in different positions. Other than holding weight out in front of you, bending forward and twisting, which is the highest amount of stress on a disc, essentially sitting is probably the highest stressor on the disc. And again, why is that? Your butt is not moving, gravity is squishing you down, using your body weight plus all the atmosphere squishing you down and that causes the joints and discs to settle um, and wear out. So that's where being sedentary, which really means not moving, um, so sitting is just part of it, really it's a matter of fact of moving, um, really can help keep you more comfortable, more healthy as well. Um, so sedentary lifestyle is the first modifiable and then the second um, and this was really important when I was growing up because um, it was the primary thing that we did to ourselves that destroyed our bodies, um, which is cigarette smoking, okay? Um, cigarette smoking is poisonous. Uh, it's not just nicotine. It's all the chemicals involved with uh, burning that are uh, toxic to the body. We know with absolute certainty that cigarette smokers have a higher incidence of low back pain, of disc degeneration, of heart disease, lung disease, poor function, okay? Um, I can't undo the ravages of the toxins put in your body by just stopping. But if you stop, we can keep those ravages from continuing and getting worse. It's like just dumping poison in your body and destroying your body, if you stop that, it can help slow down the degradation process. So I'm a big fan of non-smoking. Uh, people will ask all the time, what about vaping? Isn't it safer than cigarette smoking? Well, what you don't have in vaping is the burning chemicals that are created. However, you're vaporizing some chemicals we're not sure if those chemicals are affecting your body and how they're affecting your body. Um, this most recent problem with the vaping and people getting sick and stuff, frankly, um, that probably also has to do with most of those people are putting into their body chemicals they have no idea what it is. It's an off the street kind of combination. And so we're finding that those chemicals in that um, configuration, the, the steam va uh, vapor um, are harming people's lungs, for example. Well, we would never know that until you get a bunch of people doing it. That's what we found with cigarettes. Everybody used to think cigarette smoking was healthy for you. Shoot, when I was a little kid, physicians would advertise on TV for cigarette companies saying it's healthy. Well, we know that it's not healthy. It causes cancer, it causes heart disease, it causes deterioration of our spines. Um, so we're still look, trying to figure out the whole vaping thing. So um, anyway, that's my soapbox on that. So the three things you can't fix or you can't affect um, are genetics, age and time, degeneration, trauma, past history, bad luck. The things you, you can potentially address are your general health, fitness, staying away from being sedentary, and then poisoning your body with toxins like cigarette smoking, and in my opinion, vaping as well. Um, other than that, there's not really a whole lot of other factors involved. I mean, yeah, if you fell off a bridge and broke your back, that's, that's one of those bad luck things. But basically, when, it, when you distill it down, uh, not only does this apply to the spine, it applies to the body in general. So um, my advice to people is, 
Don't wish that something hadn't happened. Don't hope that something's going to change just because time is moving on because none of the degeneration aging changes are going to get better. Sometimes they can get less symptomatic, but they're never going to go away. The body doesn't regenerate itself. So don't waste your time on, on wishing and hoping, okay? Take care of yourself. Stay mobile. Stay flexible. Don't get heavy. Don't do bad stuff to your body like pouring toxins in it. And be a little cautious about what you do, how you lift, how you bend, how you twist, okay? The rest of the stuff, not really reason to worry about, okay? So this is our topic for today, chronic, kind of why people find themselves in, in a situation of chronic back pain. Uh, I know it sounds a little bit dark, a little bit hopeless. I don't look at it that way. It's really just the way it is. Um, we haven't talked any about um, treatment, and that's really a different topic because there's a whole slew of treatments, um, you know, exercise, injections, chiropractic, physical therapy, sometimes surgery, all these things. It's a wide universe out there. Um, and the reason why it's such a wide universe, in my opinion, is there's not one specific thing that's the problem. There's lots of different things to try and people are desperate to try just about anything because there really is no specific answer to why, okay? There's not one specific part or thing that's out of place in general for chronic lower back pain that can be undone, repaired, or addressed. So that's why you see chiropractors on every street corner and massage therapists on every street corner and relax the back stores everywhere and you know, exercise regimens and all kinds of hopes and dreams that may or may not pan out because we really don't have a good, solid, simple way to address this very complicated problem, okay? So anyway, I hope this has been helpful to you. I think I'm gonna sign off now. Um, we'll be back next week. I think next week, what are we talking about, Brooke? What can I do to help my back? What can I do to help my back? One of the things you can do um, is go onto our YouTube page. Some time ago, six months ago or so, I did some exercise videos um, showing people some stretching and some uh, strengthening exercises for their core and lower back. Um, I'm gonna be referring to those a lot because those are my simple basic instructions for people. And it's really, I demonstrate all these things, um, kind of goofy, you get to see my weird socks. and. Um, uh, it's worth looking into. Again, nothing's perfect. There's no absolute right way, wrong way. But this is my approach to helping people um, live with their back and live their best life despite what the universe gives you. Okay? So anyway, thanks for listening. I hope this has been interesting. Um, I'll see you next week. Uh, until then, go out there and live your best life.